and today we're talking about being a human design projector and creating structure and flow. I'm loving this series that we've been doing on structure and flow, feminine and masculine, and I honestly do believe that a lot of the things that I will share with you today can be applied to any type of human design or any human being, even if you don't believe in human design or whatever, um, because at many different seasons of life, you know, you're going to have more energy versus less energy. And really at the core of my message today is that you really need to be able to adapt yourself to, for lack of a better word, like your energetic packets or the seasons of your life. An example of this is that I see so many women complaining about what they can't or can't do based on their children's age. And I have kids. I, I was in the same circumstance, but those thoughts didn't occur to me. Apparently, I didn't get the memo that you're not able to do things if you have kids. So I, I didn't know. I just thought you just you know, you work around it, like you bloom where you're planted. And so when I hear women saying that, I'm like, oh, that's a belief too. That is definitely a belief that you can choose into, right? So you have to be able to honor the season of life that you're in and the packet of energy that you have been given at the moment. As for being a projector, let me know if any projectors over here. I know that I have uh, quite a few in my world. So with me, uh, one of the biggest things I've noticed, and this is definitely a projector thing that come, you know, it's one of the things that comes with being a human design projector is that I have like these bursts of energy. And when you, when I have like this burst of energy, you might even think that I'm a generator or a Manny Gen. And then that burst of energy is usually followed by this like resting and this like calming period. Before, when this would happen to me, before I understood stood my energy type and what human design is and everything, I thought there was something wrong with me and that I had to fix this. And since then, I've learned to actually work with that and honor that and actually use that to my benefit. So for those of you guys that are new here, hello, my name is Amina Irfan. I am a human design projector for six and I have amassed massive amounts of success in my life as is promised to projectors uh, as they follow their design. Um, I did not learn about human design until about four years ago, I wanna say. So most of my success came before I learned about human design and it's because I was literally just following my energetic blueprint. So of course, learning about human design helped me validate how I felt and why I felt and, and let me kind of like streamline my energy and my embodiment. But I'm here to tell you that projectors 1000% are designed to have massive success following their blueprint. And our success just looks very different than what we have been sold uh, previously because it looks different than what might be true for generators, right? And so welcome in. Uh, today we're talking about working within that structure and the flow of your energy. Um, if you're new to human design or been, you know, wanting to have a reading, my son Armand does fantastic human design readings. In fact, most of his clients are already like begging him for a second call before they're even done with his first call. His email is listed in the description box for you. Um, oh, thank you so much. Haney has it, a majesty of divinity at Gmail. And he has many different types of readings. He can do relationship readings. He can do readings even if you don't, don't know your exert, uh, exact birth of time. Uh, he has a way of uh, helping you figure that out. So um, if you need more information, you can contact him regarding that. For me, what I've noticed is that I will have this burst of energy and then followed by this sort of like resting period. So what I personally do is I leverage that. I'm in that burst of energy right now, in case you can't tell, that's why I wrote an entire book in like 20 days. Um, when that happens, I'll start recording videos, live streaming, launching courses, writing books, like whatever I need to do, I will do it knowing very well that it it may not be consistent all the way through. So by the end of, you know, whenever that 
starts going down, I honor that. I start resting more. I start, um, you know, letting go of projects or putting things off. This really serves me. In the past, I would have gotten annoyed. I would have tried to push through the down, the down period. Like if it, we're calling it peaks and valleys of energy, if I was having a valley, I would like, you know, try to force myself or, or rest, but then be mad about it or grumpy about it. Like what's wrong with you? Why, why don't you have energy kind of thing? But the truth is when I'm actually resting, I'm creating more in those periods where I'm not doing anything but resting, playing, um, just like being is when all of those creative downloads actually come. So I almost have to look at myself as these two different personalities. Like I've got the, the million dollar babe that's like resting and playing and then the self-aware Barbie comes out more um, when I need to like put things into action. So in using this concept, the book was actually downloaded while I was resting. I wasn't aware of it, but it was there. And then I got the burst of energy and I started writing the book and then it was delivered in those 20 days. By the way, we had such a savagely fantastic welcome party in the channeled course. Oh, it was so delicious. I had no idea it was going to be so savage, but it was savage. So it's in the course dashboard for those of you guys who are in there. If you would like to join, the link for channeled is in the description box. Let me know as you're hearing this, what is coming up for you? Do you as a projector leverage these highs and lows of your energy or do you tend to go into, oh, I can't do anything, I don't have enough energy. When you're in that mode, when you're in the valley, when you're supposed to be resting and playing, I wonder how many downloads you're actually leaving on the table because you weren't in the frequency to actually be able to harness them. So that's one thing that I wanna say. Another thing, um, channeled welcome party was wonderful. Thank you, Abby. It was so nice having you in there. Yeah, I was, I was not aware that it was gonna be what it was. I just came in and channeled and it was freaking awesome. So thank you for joining me. The other thing I wanna say is that a lot of nudges that you're going to get in those like rest periods may not seem logical, but do them. This is gonna sound nuts, but I do this for both my peaks and valleys of energy. I think of myself as an antenna and this antenna needs to be kind of like tuned to be able to get the downloads of what I'm supposed to be next. And sometimes I'll wake up and it will say, wear green today. Like I literally just wore this outfit last week for a live stream. So when today it was like, wear that outfit again, it was like, I just wore that last week, wear that outfit. And I can't quite explain it, but wearing my hair in a certain way, wearing a certain lip color, wearing a certain color, changing positions. This is a big one that drives me kind of crazy, but I do it anyways. I'll, when I'm about to go do something, it will tell me, no, don't read in here, go and read in this other room or go and have your tea in that room or live stream from that room. I'm like, but I don't have my ring light set up in that room. Live stream from that room. And every time I've listened to this, magical things have unlocked for me. Every time I've second guessed it and not listened, I could feel that something was off. Like I could feel it. I could feel that I didn't get the full entirety of like the message that I could have gotten. The day wasn't unfolding exactly as it could have if I had just followed the downloads. And it, this has taken me a really long time to perfect and like really understand in my life. But I believe all of this stuff is connected. Sitting in a certain room, facing a certain way, wearing a certain color, positioned a certain way, puts us in that morphogenetic field where we're supposed to download the next steps or the next bit of wisdom or information. And even if it sounds crazy, I'm going to encourage you to follow through and do those things. 
even like I said, it's not, it might not make rational sense. Like my family has just now accepted that she's just gonna live stream from any room at any time facing in any direction. And over the years, I ha or over the year, I should say that we've been living in this house, I have bought like so many more ring lights and set up uh, so that it's easier for me to set up and start live streaming or, or do things in different rooms. And that's where the structures come in. Create a structure for yourself to be able to rest in the periods that you are being led to rest. Resting is actually when you're downloading. Resting is actually when your your wisdom is being transmitted to you and your body, your energetic body, your physical body is being upgraded. It that skipping the rest period, especially for a projector, is like skipping sleep. Like you know how people literally can go insane from skipping sleep? That's how I want you to think of yourself as a projector. When you're resting, you're actually working. That's actually like divine work. So don't skip that portion. Create a structure around it. Allow yourself to rest. Strangely enough, the more I allow myself to rest and play and just be, the faster the energy comes back again. But if I try to short change myself or like rush through that period, I'm like the energy will take longer and it will dissipate quicker. So give this video a thumbs up if this is making sense to you, okay? Then when you are in that energy where you have the energy, that's the divine saying, now go, take action, take the action. Create those structures that help you. Like for me, I live stream a lot when I'm in my energy mode. So I have bought ring lights and put them in every room. So all I have to do is like plug it in and, and situate it the way that I want to, but I'm no longer carrying the same ring light, you know, all the way across my 8,600 square foot home because now I feel like live streaming in a different room, right? So set whatever that means in your life, set yourself up in that way. Um, I also like, you know, in, in the whole YouTube world, they say, oh, you know, you should be consistent and you should post in the same frequency and you should like post every Monday or whatever. I've learned 12 years being on YouTube. That's never going to work for me. Okay. I have tried it countless times. It just doesn't work. So I have given myself full permission to post as many videos as I feel like when I'm in my energy mode and like go missing when I'm not. Like it's okay. I don't try to even schedule stuff. It never feels good to me to record things when I'm in my energy mode and like schedule it. I'm meant to deliver the video when it comes. Because think of it this way. If I, like let's say that I'm in my energy mode right now, which I am, and I recorded like 10 videos and I scheduled them out that's not the energy that is supposed to be transmitted during that time. The energy that I have now, it's meant to be put into projects that I'm currently working on that were downloaded when I was resting, like the channeled course, the book that I'm writing, these live streams that I'm doing. If I start using that energy to project it onto the future, it just doesn't work. I can't tell you how uneasy it feels. In fact, anytime I've tried to do that, I have never let those videos actually post because they already feel old and unrelevant, like irrelevant by the time that comes around. So this is all the universe giving me signs of like stay in the zone and stay in the energy and stay in the download that you are currently being given. A week later or two weeks later, I'm a completely different person that's getting completely different downloads. And to see those old videos now being posted just gives me the heebie-jeebies. It just doesn't feel good. And as a projector, that's our number one sign that that's not what we're supposed to be doing, right? It's supposed to feel really good to us. It's supposed to feel like play. So I don't care that YouTube says that, hey, you need to be consistent. Me being consistent with my energy means that I will post however many videos I feel like posting when I'm in my peak of energy and then taking a break when I'm not. And that's okay because people have my other videos to go and watch the ones that were delivered previously, right? Hi, Mina. I'm a hybrid two for projector generator. I love the way you teach human design. You're the way 
an invitation I needed to give myself the new perspective around lacking of energy story. Yes, I know I used to be mad at myself, right? Like, oh, why, why can't I just have like consistent energy? That's just not how we're designed. And it is consistent energy if you think about it. It's just consistent to what we're supposed to be doing. When we're resting and playing, we're supposed to be antennas to receive the downloads. So in that time, moving makes it harder for the divine to give us the downloads in the way that they're meant to be received. Like, so for example, if they're coming from the, sun, the, the sun's rays or the moonlight or the breeze, you know, hitting the ocean in just the right way, and I'm over here trying to work, I'm not going to fully receive it. So all of those things are exactly what they need to be. You sitting by the ocean or riding your bike or playing with your family or reading a good book or just laying, you know, in, at the beach or whatever you do, you know, to recharge is exactly where you need to be so that the downloads can be put into you so that you can hear them, you know, you can receive them. And then when they interact with your energy, you co-create something with them. So the download plus you creates the thing that you now need to put out, like whatever that thing is in your world. For me, it's my books, it's my courses, it's my live streams, right? But if I say, oh, you know, my when I don't have energy, that's a negative. No, I need to be positioned at exactly, you know, that position by my pool or on the beach somewhere, whatever it is, to receive the next download. So thinking of it this way is a game changer. This is making sense. I had a lot of work to do the other day, I but I had to allow myself to rest, work, rest to get it done. Once I surrendered to needing rest at times, the work flowed more easily. Yes, now you are getting it, right? Because that rest is, it's like you sleeping and then getting all the downloads or it's like the space in between a breath or the silence in between a musical note. Like all of it is necessary. If you're just moving all the time, that's you being in your automation. That's you being in your fight or flight. That's not when you will receive the downloads that you need. You need to sta like stay still or whatever. Like sometimes just when I'm out in my neighborhood riding my bike, like it just feels so delicious and so expansive. This weekend we had a day, it was so weird because I woke up like feeling a new depth of good. Like I always feel great, like 99.9% .9 of the time inside of me. But this day I woke up, if you guys are in my container course, you know what I'm talking about? It was like I woke up and I had unlocked a different level of well-being and like vibration that I had never felt before. It just felt so freaking deep. And we had some plans to go shopping and go have lunch and like just do all this fun stuff. And I said to my husband, I said, today is going to be fantastic. It's going to be the best day ever. And I can't explain it to you, but it just felt better than any other day that it's ever felt. And of course I've done more exciting things than just going shopping with my family and eating out, but it just inside of me felt like a new layer was being expanded. Well, what if I had told myself, no, we need to stay home and work that day. This expansion that was supposed to happen inside of me required exactly the activities that we did because that's what was planned for that day. That's what was written in the stars for that day. That's how it happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen, right? So you forcing yourself out of the alignment of where you need to be doing what you're supposed to be doing, whether it's taking a nap or journaling or reading a good book or spending time with family, is a disservice to humanity. You are leaving so many downloads on the table. Like when I came out of that day, this was on Saturday, by the way, which feels like a hundred years ago now, but it was two days ago. I've had a different container. I don't know what God is preparing me for. Maybe something like bigger than I've ever imagined is coming through. I, I don't know what that is yet. I can't imagine what it could be. I'm, I'm already feeling so much bliss but I needed that ripping open. 
And I feel um, since then, um, since Saturday, I'm just getting more emotional out of joy than I've ever gotten before. So can you see that forcing myself to have any other day would have robbed myself of that experience and therefore robbed the universe of the thing that will come out of that, the teachings, the, the whatever, right? I don't know what's gonna come out of it. Let me see what you got. I have my computer here, but I'll put it here so I can see you at the same time. The present moment has the magic. You just get it and make it happen. Yes, hi, Sophia. She says, so happy you're doing this. I'm also a projector and I've been binge watching your human design videos. Thank you, Sophia. I actually have an entire course on human design as well. It is linked in the description box. And if you guys need readings, then Armand at, uh, what's his email? Majestyofdivinity at gmail.com. It is in the description box and we'll also pin it to the first comment. Um, can do your reading, but knowing your energetic structure and your body and how your energy works is a game changer because now we're no longer like fighting against it, trying to manipulate it in some way, going against it. Like I love the way that I've been designed. Like it's all divinely created to be so perfect and harmonious, right? It's like, okay, go into deep breaths, receive your downloads, expand your container, and then come and teach it. Come in come and show them, come and do the work, come and like move your hands and feet. It's so divine. It's so delicious. It's so perfect. So here's my question for you. And whether you are a projector or not, I believe you can use this. What structures do you need to create around your rest and play, your valley time, so that you can be in your flow? so that you allow it to be okay, so that you leverage that time and you get the most out of it. What structures you need to create, do you need to create, okay? So that's your journal prompt number one. Journal prompt number two is what structures do you need to create for your active time, for your peak time, for your energy time, so that you can be in that flow? And whether, you know, for me, it's like, okay, like, you know, create, getting the more ring lights was one of them. So what, what kind of things are those for you? Writing, um, writing a bulk of my emails during that time, you know, like th what can I do? How can I set it up so that my energy is best served? Yeah. Another thing um, that we experimented with, and that's, that was the download that it came at the time. And, you know, I always followed divine downloads this week it changed so two weeks ago this was exactly when i came back from saint thomas after my timeline ju jumping intensive when i came back um the download came that i needed to move my laptop in in our home office so we have an official huge gorgeous home office downstairs that is not where i usually work from my husband usually uses that office and i said to my husband that i'm meant to bring my computer in here and write my book in here and he said, okay, I'll, I'll go get your computer. So he, he like shifted me down there from here, which is my office. So for two weeks, I was downstairs and I wrote the first draft of, of the book. I even edited the first chapter from there. Last night, it was yesterday evening, I got the download. Nope, you're done. Move your office back. And of course, as you can, as you can imagine, right? If you're not used to following your divine nudges, there could be a part of you that's like annoyed with yourself. You're like, oh my God, now I'm like, you know, moving back. But I said to my husband, I said, um, that's it. I'm done with the office. I'm supposed to go back. It, the, I guess the only purpose was for me to write the book there. So he's like, okay, um, he moved my office back up here. And from here, I had the most savage party, welcome party inside my ch channeled course. And I got so much more of my book edited from here. You guys might be listening to this and thinking, oh, this is like bananas, it's crazy. But I have just learned to follow those, those bits of guidance. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I needed to be in the office um, in that exact space, but must be the direction that I was facing or sitting or where the downloads were gonna come from. I stopped questioning it. I just follow the nudges. Like I'm just, a servant of God that says, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do next. And I just move towards it. Now I'm back in this office and 
I, this is the first day I'm working out of here and it feels amazing. I'm like, great, now this is so aligned. Tomorrow, I might get a completely different download and that's okay, that's okay. You need to invite in whatever and however it's coming through. So excited to join and be receiving this resonating so much to my journey right now, perfect. So where are you being guided? What colors do you need to wear? Where, what direction do you need to face in? Where does your workstation need to be? Where does your commuter need to be? Where do you need to take your nap? What, where do you need to go for fun or rest? Or who are the people that you need to talk to? Who are the people that maybe you don't need to talk to? All of these things interact with our energy to create the whole experience. Like all of it is important, all of it is vital. You must take all of that into account. So what is coming up for you guys? I'll stay up for a few minutes, um, answer any questions coming up. Is this resonating? Questions, comments? For those of you guys watching in the replay, put replay in the comments and let us know what is coming up for you? By the way, people have been asking, so my first book, the easiest way to find it, we do have the link, but apparently some people were getting confused. If you go into Amazon and search my name, Mina Irfan, then all of my books will show up. Uh, the Kindle version, the paperback version, um, they should show up in there. So I have one main book and right now, and then two little guides, and I'm writing my second book, which is super exciting. How did you develop more confidence with following divine nudges? So as you guys know, you've heard me talk about this many times, confidence comes from repetition. So the more I do it, the more my confidence grows. In the beginning, I didn't have confidence, so I needed courage, I needed trust, I needed faith, because the, the stage before confidence is courage. And it did require a lot of courage because my brain would be saying something completely different than the intuition would be saying or the divine guidance would be. But every time I followed my intuition, life unfolded in magical ways. And when I didn't, my energy just felt a little bit more stagnant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a great day. I'm so glad. Awesome. And yes, it is resonating. I break so many rules, but this is giving me more courage to constantly follow my intuition. My soul knows what I need. Absolutely, your soul needs knows. If your soul needs knows so much better than your brain, that's for sure. That is for sure. How to get in my flow as manifesting generator. So to get into a flow, uh, any uh, to get into flow as any type, you need structures. So um, I always start with decluttering my mind, my body, my space, and creating like think of it this way: you you need to create like almost like a temple type of environment to be able to get into a meditation. Right? It's like that in the beginning. So. Do you have a system that you do every day consistently that helps you get into flow? If you watch all of the videos that I have put into this structure and flow series, it will start to make sense to you. In fact, guys, I have put all of this um, in a podcast format. I don't know if you guys are aware, but YouTube now offers a podcast listening experience using the YouTube Music app. If you download the YouTube Music app, you can find my these same videos listed as podcasts, so you can listen to them on the go, and it's more of an audio experience. I have put them in there, so you can listen to all of them. Any flow requires structure. You need to build structure. So my morning routine gets me into my flow. Like doing the same things every day in the same sequence gets me into my flow. Hi, Mina, I love this. Thank you for sharing that all the title nudges, all the little nudges matter. I was wondering if you can share more about taking action immediately equals God loves speed. So I shared about that in my channeled course today. And actually in the first module, I'll be going deeper into that. This is information that 
serves you when you hear it in more of a chorus format because you're getting the whole transmission. So if you're not in there, definitely join us in channeled. If you're already in there in module one where I shared the entire process of channeling, you'll realize why speed is vital. It is vital. In fact, I talked about this even today in the welcome party that you absolutely need to move with speed, especially when you are channeling work. And it just goes back to the communication barrier between us and the, and the divine. It's just a different language, right? That we're having to translate. Are you in that in there by any chance, Jess? Because we literally were talking about this today. So I'm wondering if you're carrying that over. Any other questions coming up regarding human design, structure, flow? Another way of thinking about it is also that your physical body is the structure that holds the flow of your energetic body. And so human design is basically just giving you a glimpse of or an x-ray format of what that looks like. Like what will best serve you? What kind of structures do you need? Like for example, for generators, they absolutely need a structure to make sure that they're following their intuition because they have unlimited energy. They often say yes to projects that do not serve them because that's not what they're supposed to be doing. They get recruited doing things by other people sometimes or you know, talked into things. So if, if you have a structure around every time I'm you know, shown an opportunity, I do this, this, and this, and then I reply, that will be the structure that will help your flow because then you will only be making decisions you know, after following a certain series. Like if I was a generator, I would train myself to pause for at least 20 seconds, drop into my body, check in with my sacral, see if it's a uh-huh or a uh-uh, and then reply, right? In the beginning, this might be difficult because I might be used to replying right away and getting myself into projects and things I'm not supposed to be doing. But over time, I would have trained myself to pause before I answer. Oh, Jess, awesome. So in module one, you will get the entire structure of and you'll, when we talk about channeling, you'll know why it's so vital, vital that you move with speed. You'll notice that when it's time for movement, the energy will show up. When it's not time to take energy uh, action or you have a whole bunch of limiting beliefs blocking your energy, your action, then the energy will tank. So because I've done so much inner work and I continue to do so, I can tell the difference where if it's a block, or if it's just uh, that isn't the t moment to take action, okay? Anything else coming up for you guys before I let you go? I know there's a lag, so I'll, I'll wait a couple minutes and then if you have questions show up, you can ask in the comments after this live. Thank you, Abby, I appreciate that. I have just, so channeling is learned and unlocked in tears as I was talking about in the channeled course. I just unlocked a new level for myself and I'm so excited and it's coming with this burst of energy. And I know that energy is supposed to be put in um, not only finishing my book, but also in the channeled course. So that's what I'm doing right now, right? Like putting that energy where it belongs. If uh, I am a generator and I easily get into flow all the time, do I need more structure or can I keep doing what I'm doing? So as I talked about in my previous video, don't, don't ever block or stop flow to create structure. It defeats the purpose. You need structure to get into flow. So that means you do have structure because you are obviously in flow. So why on God's earth would you stop flow to go create structure, it makes absolutely no sense. So absolutely don't do that. Once you're already in flow, you'll get out when you need more structure. <laughs> you'll lose it. Like you'll lose the flow and be like, okay, why are things hard again? Oh, I guess I need more structure. So then it's time to create the structure. Silly question. Do you still do decluttering even though you have a housekeeper? 
Absolutely, my housekeeper doesn't know what I'm supposed to get rid of or donate or yeah, absolutely do not give your housekeeper that kind of permission, I would say. Um, that would be disastrous. So I'm still the queen of my household and my energy is very much infused into everything. So yes, I need to decide what stays and what goes for sure. Mina, what do you think about time boxing? I sometimes use it to feel in control. I'm a manifester. I have no idea what that is. Um, once you're in the million dollar babe, time works in a different realm for you. So I'm not sure, but if it's working for you, absolutely continue doing it. Makes so much sense for me as a projector using the word structure instead of masculine because as projectors, we are so empathic and emotional. You need structures around yourself. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Um, I have had to create structures on who's allowed to come like, and to what distance to my being because there's some people, I have a lot of open uh, centers. As you guys know, I'm a projector, reflector hybrid. So I can't just have anyone in my field because my uh, empty centers will take in and amplify that energy. So yeah, I have a lot of structures. The structures keep the love and light inside where it's supposed to be and the not so needed energies outside. Do you find that flow comes easier certain times of the month? I do. Um, I don't really keep track of that, um, but if you do, that's awesome. Everything you are saying is reminding me of the book you recommended, Untamed. It feels like as women, we are supposed to be living wild and free, aligned to our souls. Many of us have forgotten this. Yes, beautifully said. And to be able to be wild and free, we need those con uh, structures to feel safe because wild and free is amazing until you're wild and free and like feeling unsafe then it's not amazing so yes we do need those structures to be able to stay in that realm for sure the feminine by definition is just so wild and free and i love that the divine feminine So all right, ladies and gents, whoever is watching, I hope that you found this useful. Let me know what was your key takeaway in the comments. I have a whole playlist on projectors. In fact, I will go ahead and add this training to my existing podcast version and the YouTube version of my human design playlist. And I also have an entire course, uh, which is linked in the description box. And my son's information will also be there for your reading. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.